Hello class, now we're working on our example. Let's show what you can do with a helix on the surface of an object. Uh, this is going to be handy when you are, uh, you know, one of our projects for creating a bottle. You're going to create threads on the external uh, and internal portions. So you can manually do it or you can do it with the, um, basically insert uh, thread option that we have when it comes to uh, the whole wizard. Thread, thread option, but let's say you want to do your own helix and then do your own um, on a surface or on the inside. I'm going to do this one on the surface. So if we go back to curves, helix and spiral, it's going to say, you know, your, your plane. We're always going to do it on the top plane on this one. Now, actually, if I, if I do this, do the center. Raise 25 around the edge. <clears throat> now, I'm in spiral mode again. I want to do, let's say I want the pitch 5. I'm actually going all the way to the top, but let's say I don't want to go all the way to the top. I want to go, I'm just going to do 9 revolution. Well, actually, um, remember, pitch and revolution, height and revolution. How about I do it 40 millimeters? revolutions that's going to change my pitch smaller um, like I say it's all dependent on if you're looking for a constant pitch uh, then I would do height and pitch I want 40 let's say I wanted a pitch of 5 and just to show you real quickly now we have to do a boss um, a sweat boss base Make sure your helix is selected. So when you select this, I'm just going to go for a circular profile because we haven't learned your sketch profile yet. <clears throat> and way too large. Let's go, you know, three. Now, remember when you're doing a merge result, that's merging to whatever you're touching. So, um, You select the go. Now I've got a uh, helical um, half circle all the way up uh, the 40 millimeters that I selected from the base. Okay, this part I actually uh, originally created. I you know you go two different directions. I originally um, uh, for the tutorial I was gonna I created just a uh, extrude upward. And then, oh wait, let me let me go change. Let me go two directions. It's true downward. But when you select the base um, of like a part, and then I extrude downward, it still goes to the base. So then I had the, uh, the helix spiral going from the base. So if you're trying to um, do a helix from like somewhere in you know not at the base but somewhere above, I'd uh, suggest drawing uh, your helix circle at that location. So in case, you know, we're doing on the um, the top plane right now, and this is, I think, what, 10 millimeters below the top plane. If you have the top plane and you want to start 10 millimeters above, start your sketch 10 millimeters above. So this is, uh, like I say, useful when you're doing it um, on a surface of a circular item or on the inside also. Again, okay, one thing you want to do when you're doing a uh, you know, helical coil on the outside or inside of a you know, circular cylinder, cylindrical feature, uh, you don't want them to just end because, uh, yeah, when you're doing a helix and you're extruding a shape, in our case right here, we're just doing a circular shape, uh, when they end, they end flat. So uh, if this was like a thread, you'd want it to probably taper off gradually um, rather than just instantly abruptly end. For a circular feature like this, the uh, simplest thing is, uh, <laughs> this is probably like the 20th time I've tried this, is to do a, uh, just a little dome. The dome. There's a dome feature in SOLIDWORKS, but it doesn't work that great for something like this. It actually does a, a nice job on like the whole circular feature, but half, not so much. Um, so if I'm doing a sketch, the flat plane, let me draw now, a vertical line, and then I'm going to do from center, 
highlight, highlight. Now, one thing I noticed, let me go to the front view. Actually, perpendicular, it's easier to see from here. Let's see my constraints. Now I got two constraints here. I want Let me fix that. Let's fix the relationships. And for some reason, yeah, sometimes when you don't do a uh, extra constraint, it'll think it's open. So now I've got the fully constrained sketch there. Let me go to features, revolve. I do not want a thin feature. Axis of revolution will be the vertical line. And uh, 360, as long as, uh, you know, you could do 360, you could do an angle, but I want to make sure I encompass all the way into this feature. And since our part, the thickness here is, uh, doesn't really matter and we're merging our, uh, results, uh, 360 works fine. And there you have you know, a better looking, cleaner end. And if I were doing, um, you know, a part where you actually had this, uh, this would be an easier feature, especially if you're doing like uh, injection molding or something like that. So you can do that to both ends and that make it look better.